Hey everyone, finally getting to the bottom of the mail pile. This will be the last mailbag of the year. So um, with nothing further ado, let's get started. First one up is not in a wrapper because I could not figure out what the hell it was. And what had happened is this is a lithium polymer battery, which cannot be sent airmail. Uh, but this one was sent airmail. Uh, the AliExpress seller put it in the case of like a USB microscope or something and then shipped it airmail like that lying about the content. So that was kind of crappy of them. But uh, yeah, I did throw away the packaging. Uh, this is uh, $22.73. Um, but this is a special lithium polymer battery. And for that, I need to explain this thing. So, ugh. So as you guys know, I do a lot of... Um, remote control stuff or at least I'm an enthusiast for remote control stuff and um, this here is a really high quality but very old remote control uh, transmitter uh, this is a Futaba T3 PK I believe yeah Futaba Magnum T3 PK and this thing is very fancy it's a three channel uh, it's got you know proportional control and whatever and it's got um, there we go, a little LCD display which you can uh, mess around with and adjust things and whatever. Problem is, you might have just heard that beep, the batteries are dying. And the batteries that came with it are these horrible uh, nickel cadmium batteries which you can charge, you can charge up for, you know, hours and get minutes out of the, um, out of the charge. So these things are degraded beyond sort of the usefulness of their life and so uh, most controllers today will use something like an 18650 problem is this thing runs on 12 volts as you can see one two three four five six seven eight batteries 1.5 volt a battery 12 volts so um, that's problematic i can't also use a triple a's in here because the problem is you need so many of them and for me to print a holder for it, uh, it, it's just, it's a pain in the butt. Plus, I mean, eight batteries is still quite expensive to have eight batteries stuck on this full time. So I bought this lithium battery. A lithium battery does not discharge over time and uh, it has way more capacity than this thing here. So this here is a 600 milliamp hour, 9.6 volt DC. It's 9.6 volts, but when you charge it up to full, it's around 12 volts. Look at the size of this lithium battery. This lithium battery is 11.1 .1 volts, charge up full to 12.6, and it is a 2200 milliamp hour battery. And it is much smaller. And so this should fit right in here, but in this little rubber tray, it's just a little bit too tall. Uh, so this here doesn't quite close. See that, it just, just touches there. So the only thing I need to do is take this rubber tray out, uh, set it to the side, and then I can use this, uh, this remote again. Now, this is temporary. My plan is that I want to design uh, an open source radio. So that can go in there and that plugs right into there. And I already marked it a long time ago. But my plan is to design an open source radio. So, you know, we'll be able to use an NRF a 24 LO1 module or maybe even these little add-on modules that this one is running so this was a, a FM radio before but it comes with a little uh, area that you can put on an add-in pack so here's the add-in pack for mine so this is uh, now converted to 2.4 gigahertz so I would love to build you know an open source radio that just either connects to these modules or that uh, uses its own modules so that people can do RC projects inspired by the ones that I make here at home for inexpensive. So yeah, uh, my version's probably gonna run on, off an 18650, but I love this remote, so I wanted to get the lithium battery. On to the next one. Next one up is this one here, $24.01. I do believe I have another one related to this, so if that's what it is, I will uh, grab it. Yep, 
It is the one I was thinking. So I do have something related to it. So it's going to be a twofer. So um, over on my live streaming channel, SE made a stream uh, shown on screen linked in the description. Um, I am designing an open source RC car. And with that, you need some inexpensive shocks and springs. And so here are the inexpensive shocks and springs. So 24 bucks for uh, a set of four of these. And hopefully these are sealed so I can actually put um, oil in here. And if you can put oil, let's see. Yes, you can put oil. So these will be adjustable dampening dampers. Uh, these are as long as I could get. So yeah, right now they're just, they spring out like crazy. Um, but when you put oil in, you can tune the dampening rates. So that's pretty good. So yeah, four of them for $24 isn't bad because I plan on making a few different RC vehicles. And for that, um, these things will be reusable. I plan on reusing the same style of shocks on all of them. So these being so inexpensive is actually a very good thing because then people will be able to take this, uh, the motor, the, the uh, battery, the speed controller, the servo for steering, uh, even the wheels and tires in some cases, and take them off the one design and put them on the next one. So if I can find some inexpensive ones, people can use those. And then if they want to upgrade, it should also not cost very much because then they can just use the new types on the new vehicle. Now, I think this is supposed to be two different spring rates. I'm, I'm not actually sure if these springs are different, like the package comes with extra springs. Um, I'm just going to peel this up. It looks like the body is aluminum. Not sure if these... Uh, the ends are aluminum. Yeah, they look aluminum. So it looks like it's all metal. Oh, that won't go any further. Maybe I have to take off the cap. I'm just curious to see if these springs are any different to the ones, the other ones in the package. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like the the ones on the side here are actually stiffer. Oh, there was some oil in there. I thought they had shipped them empty. Anyways, there wasn't enough in there, so I'll tell you that. Okay, so we got two different options of a spring uh, rates, which is good. So this actually seems like a decent kit for uh, for twenty four bucks to get uh, four shocks. Uh, basically, well, it, these are two separate springs, right? So, so it'd be four shocks and then uh, eight springs, but then eight more. So, yeah, 16, 16 springs. No, wait, there's only two extra. No, there's four extra. Yeah, so 16 springs. That's actually really good. The other thing that's uh, related is something you guys have seen before, uh, $6.89. And that's because I got more of these. These are those uh, bearings that you need to make the build. These are uh, 6804RS bearings. So yeah, I got another 10 of these. That's because you need two per hub. So you need eight for the build. So these are 10. I have two extras, but now I'll be able to design, you know, or have two vehicles on the go at once because now I've got um, 20 of these bearings. And on top of that, I am planning on doing some fun stuff. So I might need two. I might need someone else to pilot a different one. So yeah, there we go. I've got a bunch of bearings and now I've got some shocks to mess with. Next one up is this one here, $11.67. Oh, so the description, which I can't show you because my address is on it, said USB line. So I actually didn't know if these things were in. Mind you, they came in a while ago. These are lithium batteries. Again, these can't be shipped by airmail, 
So they were labeled USB line, but uh, yeah, you may not recognize these batteries, but they're actually for a PlayStation 3 controller. So they are 3.7 volts. Uh, it says 1800 milliamp hours. I'm guessing they said 1800, but they mean 180. These are tiny. I will do a, ca a capacity check if you guys care. Let's see if they arrived dead. Um, oh, that's going to be sketchy to try to probe. You guys see that? Yeah, I can't short them. They might have a, B uh, a BCM. Oh, look at that. Four volts. So they, it arrived in reasonable shape. Yeah, 3.94 volts. So I guess these things will be good. Um, I am planning on uh, taking apart my PlayStation 3 controllers to give them a clean. The batteries are completely dickered, so it's time for some new ones. And as you saw, $11 to 5 bucks a pop, actually pretty decent. I think on Amazon they were 20 bucks each, so AliExpress is the way to go. But yeah, they did lie to customs to get them in here. Next one up, this one here, six dollars and four cents. What the heck are these? Oh, that makes a lot more sense. These are, uh, well, these are the exact items that you'll see inside of a digital kitchen scale. They're basically a calibrated Wheatstone bridge. Oh, there's some aluminum goobers in there. Um, oh, these are really not finished well. So they were really cheap, six dollars for both. And basically how it works is you've got a network of resistors. I thought they were only on one side, but I guess they're on both sides. Uh, of this and basically when you uh, bolt let's say you bolt this on here and then you push on this it'll change the resistance on one on one resistor that's on one of these two sides and that'll be reported to a module like this one and then it will and then it will um, yeah you can, you can communicate with this with an Arduino or something and then you can display it on a screen or in serial data or whichever. And so the little module that's on here is the HX711. So yeah, I've got a five kilogram uh, maximum one and I've got a 10 kilogram maximum one. Not sure what the difference is. And there's an arrow and I don't know if the arrow means you push down on this side or if the arrow has to be pointing up. I really don't know. But yeah, these things are great for um, logging uh, stuff like uh, changes in, you know, thrust in my case. So if you saw those uh, RC motors that are coming through the works, uh, this is actually what I'm going to use to log the thrust. Uh, also, uh, if you do sim racing, this could be used as a uh, pedal pressure sensor. So yeah, I actually didn't know where these things were, so I'm glad they've actually arrived and so yeah if you want to see me um, mess around with this in an Arduino and stuff like that uh, let me know you can also probably see me uh, prototype this on the SE Meta stream channel and the final electronics uh, product and then I'll have a tool product after is this one here for $18.12 this one I know exactly what it is just by the sound it makes um, I don't know if you remember, but a while ago I got these um, HDMI adapters and uh, they were only the regular HDMI and in different angles going to a flat flex. Um, maybe I'll be able to find those somewhere, but anyways, this is the micro HDMI version, the one that goes with the uh, Raspberry Pi 4. That's because I splurged and paid $150 uh, on the used marketplace here and got a Raspberry Pi 4. 
So yeah, I've got um, all different right angles. So I've got one that's sort of, you know, upwards. I've got one that's downwards. And I've got left and a right. And I don't need any more flat flex cables because that kit I had came with a bunch of flat flex cables already. Damn near tore my entire studio apart trying to find the old parts. But uh, anyways, this is a Pi 3 sent to me by one of my viewers. Thank you very much for that. And this is a Pi 4, which, well, in Canada, you just simply can't get under about 200 bucks. So I bought it used. Uh, came in this um, Pi Station case. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this thing was... Um, hundred and fifty dollars and yeah so here's the other uh, HDMI that I bought so the thing is HDMI cables are not very flexible so if I want to have this in a small enclosure uh, which I do plan on it uh, I need to be able to you know plug into it and have it go out at the proper angle and if you can see I get a couple of choices here I think this one here is more convenient for what I'm trying to do, so, you know, that's good. But now the Pi 4, uh, it doesn't have full-size uh, HDMI, it has these little HDMIs, and hopefully I ordered the proper ones. I did, so there we go, 90 degrees down this way, uh, this way, see that one would cover a port, this way. This one would cover the power port, so I can't use this one at all, unless I do kind of like that one. And then this one here should be upwards. Yeah, so I haven't decided how this is going to sit inside of its enclosure yet. So I got all the options, and that's why it was a bit more expensive. And as you can see, I have another flex cable um, available. Uh, it looks like I can just order these uh, flat flex cables for not very expensive. It's these angled adapters that are that are kind of expensive but this is you know this winter I want to be designing more and more projects I'm working on quite a few even at the moment as we speak and so yeah it's worth having the parts on hand so I can do the design in fact the project I have in mind with this will be high impact so it should be uh, you know end up being a pretty good project uh, for me in my personal life at least and it shouldn't take that much effort in order to get done so yeah now I've got a whole selection of these things and that's the most important thing I need to have them on hand to be able to prototype with them last one for today it's not even a uh, electronics thing so you can skip to the end if you want this is a whole bunch of tire pressure gauges. So this was six dollars and sixty cents. There should be five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five of them. Uh, these are the types of things that have gone way up in price locally. And so I got some from China. And this is the type of thing that you should always have in your car or wherever. Uh, this one only goes up to 50 PSI. Uh, and even if it's not super precise, you do need a tire pressure gauge. Radial tires are not uh, able to be checked via the sidewall because the sidewall squishes. So you definitely need some of these. Um, I'm, I don't know if these are any good. So if you want to buy some in the description, do some at your own risk. But I do need something to sit in the car and this is what I would use. Having them now, I don't think they would stand up to professional use. They're not particularly uh, tough looking so you know I probably wouldn't rely on them for my day job uh, but for just leaving in the car and who cares if uh, I break it or you know to put uh, you know to, to whatever to just have zip tied to the frame of your bicycle uh, these things would be perfectly fine um, believe it or not these things cost somewhere around 250 at the dollar store these days so it's tough times for all of us and so that's it not only it for this episode of mailbag but that's it for this year 2022 um, if you're watching I hope that uh, your 2023 is going to be you know the best year yet and um, I want to thank all my patreon supporters for their support uh, throughout this year 
Um, it's really appreciated. It's because of you that I can move up and make big projects. Uh, for 2023, well, I'm going to hope to finish some projects, have some finished stuff to point at and show off. I would love to make it to some sort of Maker fair type thing, but uh, who knows what the future brings. I would feel more accomplished, though, if I had some cool projects to show off. So anyways, I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope you have uh, happy holidays, or have had happy holidays by the time this one is out, and have a happy new year. Thanks for watching.